Hi guys, in this video, we're going to start working with SQL and querying our uh, open food facts table or data table. And that is the first query uh, we have in, uh, in our SQL. Uh, and that means that basically get the asterisk is a placeholder for everything. Basically get all fields from that table. And that's the result here. And this kind of query is often or is not typical of your work with databases because when working with databases, and we will see that, is you always need uh, specific information to specific times. So you will never need all information. That's the magic of, of working with databases to get exactly that what you need, nothing less and nothing more at that point in time where you need it. And then at another time, you would need something else. See, so that's the that's when you have to send various queries to the very same database. Once to get that, another time to get this, and so on. So this kind of query is just basically, yeah, to test the database. And often with big tables, uh, such queries take a long time. That here took around like, uh, on my machine at least, like like 15 seconds. So if I need to, uh, you know, just test the database and I've got a huge amount of data, even bigger than this one, uh, how can I, how can I, you know, um, reduce the time? Well, there is something called a limit. You can put like, you can tell the database, just get me the first hundred and you do that with limit 100. And this doesn't get you all 1.2, uh, sorry, all 400,000 uh, rows that we have in this table, but basically just the, the first 100 and that speeds up the query and fulfills the purpose of you can at least scan through uh, the, the, the data and see, you know, what kind of data is in every field, you know, that's very important. Um, let me just run the query. That is very important to know, you know, uh, first of all, now you see now we just got 100, 100 rows and, and that is often good enough to see to scan, you know, what are the column names or field names and what kind of data is in every in every one of these. So, you know, I don't need to, you know, call the whole database. And obviously you can vary that number to whatever suits you. And this 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 also works. I mean, this we're not in Postgres, but this is a, a quasi general SQL. If I take it to uh, to SQLite and run it, I would get the same uh, results. 100 rows and um, so we can see the basically uh, the point of such queries is to see what kind of data is in there look here there's a lot of nulls in here so you know so so you have a sort of a feeling of that table and what's what's in it and what's not in it and so on now if you if you're going for a decent query that or you want to build up a decent query something useful then it is helpful to know the field names and you have to know exactly what they're called and if we look if we if we look at this query for instance now here i have listed the field names and i need exactly just these field names and um oh i just remembered uh let me just go back a, a step um in, in um, Postgres and SQLite, you have this limit 100. In, uh, I know in SQL Server, it would be written like this. Select top 100 uh, from uh, open food. That's, that's the only difference between SQL Server and, and, uh, and Postgres and SQLite. Postgres and SQLite have limit 100, whereas SQL Server uses the top 100 or top whatever number. That's that's what I wanted to say. Now, uh, let's get back to our second query. Now, in this second query, like I said, you need to know the field names. And I have them here. So that's, that's why it's very helpful. It's often helpful to scan the table, look at the field names. Uh, if you work often with a table, I mean, according to my experience, if you if you work very often with a table, you know 
where to find the field names in a table. You know, you know, for instance, if I work off enough with this table, I would know that product name is pretty much here and that, you know, proteins and fats and so on are here, somewhere around here, see, like here. So you got a feeling for, for the, the table. And that query now just gets these columns. It doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that the other columns are deleted or, or anything. No, they're just not shown. Because like I said, we don't, we often or very often do not need all columns. And most, a lot of columns are basically like the code is pretty useless information. It's just a, you know, a counter or a certain unique identifier. And uh, I don't need that. It's not very helpful for me or for my application. So um, I've got this query now. Let's run that. And now you see, um, we are now just limited to the fields I've specified. And we don't have a lot of other fields I don't need. There's no point or no need for me to see them and clutter my, uh, my, my, my found set here with those. See, so I just got what I need. Now, that's all good and fine until now. All our queries until now have always gotten everything. We, we have, we have, although we have limited the number of columns or the columns that we are seeing, but still we're getting everything, all data. Now let's limit a bit, and um, let's start off with very something very simple. Let's say I'm only interested of those products in where countries is in the is United States. So. How do I do that? Well, there's a new statement and that is where. And where means now I can start filtering. So where what? Well, what are we trying to filter? We, we're trying to find or, or we're trying to show only those products where here you'd have United States. Well, then you start off with the where and then what field or what column does it concern? It concerns the column countries. Well, then write countries and then equal to. Now, here it's very important. How is United States written here? Uh, I think I saw it somewhere. Here, it's United States. So, okay, then we write it like this. United States. Okay, and now we run it, and we should only get those uh, rows where countries is United States, and there you see we just have those countries where United States. There's nothing else. Okay, so and we have limited so the data set. Now we're not seeing all data but basically just that data fulfilling this filter. Now, when you use where, in most cases, you never use just one filter. You would need multiple filters because, you know, one filter is not enough. You know, yeah, okay, countries the United States, but then you need to pinpoint, often you need to pinpoint it even further. Now, there are two ways to combine multiple filters. You have the and, or you have the or. Now, let's get started. Now, let's say, uh, for instance, here, um, I'm seeing that there is a there is a lot of nulls here with a quantity, and that is pretty useless information for me. I need I need only to see those people were countries is United States and now here comes and quantity is not null. So basically and now this concerns the field quantity so quantity and now null is not a number. It's not zero. It is null means there is nothing in there. Not even a zero. So there you just say you write it in English is not null. So now we have two filters, countries, United States, and quantity is not null. And the AND is basically, a, 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 call it a chaining mechanism or a combination or a connection mechanism, where 
every row shown, once I, once I run this query, every row shown must fulfill both. With AND, you limit your options. Yeah, I'll give you a simple example. If you're looking for somebody rich, okay, you've got a big data set. If you're looking for somebody rich and good looking, you already limit the data set because now those people have to fulfill both rich and good looking. If you say rich and good looking and intelligent, well, now you've dramatically reduced the whole data set because now you're looking for all, all those uh, rows showing up have to fulfill all three criteria, rich, good looking, and intelligent. And the more ands you, you add, the less data you get because and limits that because each data with any with every further and your data has to fulfill all of those uh, uh, filters connected with an and and here's the same thing now we have with with countries only united states we got everybody in the united states now we're adding another filter means we're not only getting those in the united states but those in the united states and whose quantity is not null and if we run that I should then get those uh, guys who are, um, you know, fu who fulfill both of these uh, criteria. All right, and here we are. And I can add, add another another filter, which is basically this here, that the proteins uh, is not null. And if I run that, now we're limiting the data even further. Now every row shown has to have these criteria. And if you look here, you see that there's no more nulls in the quantity. I just got rid of it. And if I run this query, I would not have no more nulls in proteins either. See here, for instance, that would disappear, that would disappear. And let's run that. And now we've limited our data set even further. Okay. And now you can even, here, still here, you can use uh, the limit, for instance, 200. And hence, you, you not only have that filter operational, but you also limit, after filtering, you limit that to 200. And let's run that. And there you go. And now we have, this is sort of something which you would typically do. And now you have exactly the data that you need. And um, let's try another query. And let's take it. Let's take that off. And now another another thing. What what is often the case is that some people write United States, some people write USA, and I'd like to get them all because. I'm not so sure. What if somebody wrote USA in here? I wouldn't get it because my filter is just United States. But if somebody wrote USA or U.S.A. I wouldn't get them either. So I have to query for such contingencies. And the way you do it, that's where, some, uh, for instance, or comes in. So I'm saying, okay, either countries is, is equal to the United States or Again, countries is equal to USA or countries is equal to U dot S the U dot S the A dot A dot. Right? <clears throat> and let's take the limitation up. And now with or it's different than and. With and, we said uh, you're limiting every every and limits your uh, number the number of rows you're gonna get. With or, it's different. With or, each data set has to fulfill at least one of these. So it, it could be United States, or U, U USA, or U dot S A A dot U S dot U dot S S dot A dot. Right. So it can fulfill any one of these. If I had ands in here, you wouldn't get anybody because I doubt it if in here you'd have somebody with United States plus USA plus that, you know? So with or, 
any data set has to fulfill one of these. Now let's see here, that is often something you'd have to do in a practical database. You often have to cover for other contingencies. I cannot assume that everybody uh, wrote United States like this. And let's see if I'm right. Let's run the query. So and if we look at it, we have here United States. Do I have any USAs? Was I right? Let's see. Doesn't seem to be the case. But uh, nevertheless, doesn't matter. Well, let's let's try it this way. Um, the way to comment uh, stuff in SQL is you can either write it with a double minus. I can comment out this line. So now this line is not operational. And let me just see if there's any countries USA or U, uh, U dot. Let's see. And if I run that, now you see there's none. So contingency I had was pretty good, but there's nobody with that. So actually all countries were um, put in as uh, United States. So um, I can take that off. But nevertheless, uh, point of the, of the lesson here is to just cover for contingencies because you cannot assume that people have written the right thing in, in there. Right. Uh, now, we have seen and and we have seen or. Now, how do we combine both? Well, here one has to be very careful. Let me get... That's my... That's, that part was in that previous query. And now we have added the countries with those. Now, how do we combine both? Actually, you can leave it like this. It's pretty legit. But I, I personally have a problem with that. It is very difficult here to uh, understand how this query is built. That's why in such cases, I prefer to use parentheses. For instance, I would put a parenthesis here and here. Now that block, that block or that is one block. And this block, whoever turns up from these, from these filters, that gets combined with those. Yeah, it's the same thing. I, I, I view it the same thing as if you say five plus three times nine minus 17. You see, now, how do you do that? Do you first multiply and then add and then subtract? You know, that's why when you got something like that, and obviously I know there are rules that, I don't know, like multiplication comes before uh, adding. I don't, I don't know them by heart. So the best way to do that is to put it in blocks. First, I'd like the addition. So I put that addition in a block. Then I get the multiplication. Okay, and then after that, that's a second block. This block, then I subtract the 17 from that block. Now it's pretty obvious, it's pretty clear. Oh, that addition is one thing. And that number that turns out after the addition, that gets multiplied by 9. And then whatever turns up from that, from that you take 17 off. You see, so that is a very uh, important thing, and I and and that's the way I view it with queries. When I'm when I'm having a, this is let's say this is a complex query, I prefer to use parentheses because now anybody can see. Oh, okay, all countries uh, with something like USA, United States in them. Yeah, that's that's one block. And that block gets then combined with no nulls in quantity and no nulls in proteins. And if we run that, you would get exactly the data we had before. And But now you've got a decent query. Now, actually, you don't care if anybody enters in countries, United States as such, or in, in this way or that way. That is covered. And that's, that's very important when doing queries, especially queries where um, you're not so sure about the data. For instance, if you had, if your data is being collected by your own website and you know that a country can only be entered through a drop-down, 
you would need that. Okay. So that's our first foray into SQL. And we're going to take it a step further in the next video. Uh, uh, before I go, uh, this works exactly the same in SQLite. And you see here, I carried out the query and I'm getting exactly the same results as in, um, in Postgres. One thing to remember, in SQLite and Postgres, you can use double quotes around your field names. And you can also use no quotes. Um, the thing is like this. Some, um, some databases have problems with certain characters. For instance, if I take, if I, let's, let's put a limit, let's put a limit 10, just to speed things up. Um, for instance, um, I can take the quotes out of countries and run that. And it works. And I can take the quotes out of this one and it will probably not work. There you go. Uh, Postgres, for instance, has a problem with hyphens. That's why if you have hyphens in your field names, it is necessary to put those double quotes. Uh, that's why I use double quotes in most cases. Yeah, except now here because I knew it would work. But in most cases, if I build like a professional query, I use double quotes everywhere because this ensures that that is legit. Uh, the same procedure applies to SQLite. However, if you're using, for instance, SQL Server, it instead of uh, quotation marks, you use uh, square brackets. Uh, something like that. Your field would look something like that. And you use square brackets everywhere. That's the only difference. Other than that, it'll work fine. And I never tried quotation marks with SQL Server because I know it from work that you always use um, I always use the square brackets. And I don't know how it is with MySQL or MariaDB, but find out because these are the minute differences between each database package or each database engine. But other than that, it's pretty similar. Again, the other difference with between SQL Server and Postgres and SQLite is the limit 10. If I need, if I need um, in SQL Server, my query would look like this, top 10, and then come the field names. So instead of limit 10. So yeah, always look, it could be there's some minute differences, but in principle, it is, it is the same thinking and the same concept and it's it's very often the very same syntax with a few small exceptions